Welcome into the Blanco Show, presented by Barrio Tacos, alongside Jack Murphy, Joey Fear, Kobe Mayer. I'm Tyler Danberg, getting ready to get you ready for this weekend's Saturday afternoon matchup as number two Ohio State travels to take on Northwestern in what should be a good game in a lot of rain, possibly, at Ryan Field. But nonetheless, guys, it's going to be an exciting weekend. But first off, the start of the week, there were already some headlines as the college football playoff rankings came out for the first time this year. Jack, what were your thoughts? Well, I was kind of shocked that uh, they didn't give us the Tennessee, Georgia at one and two. I thought that they were, we were just going to get that, even though um, there are a lot of rankings that we don't agree with. Even uh, my biggest one being Clemson over Michigan, and TCU was just oh, just terrible, just terrible. But for the most part, I thought that was the most surprising thing. Believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I, Jack, I agree with you. I thought it was exciting, um, but yeah, Michigan over Clemson, I believed. But look, I mean, it's the first week of college football rankings. There's a lot. Uh, left, but like you mentioned, TCU at seven. Um, I, I felt they should be up there as well. I mean, if that was an Oklahoma or a Texas, um, you know, they, they possibly could be up there. But I mean, it's going to be interesting. But I like the first uh, ranking so far. Okay, so Georgia is not, I mean, Tennessee, number one team in the country. Sure, they, they beat Alabama, Ohio State, number two. I mean, Penn State was, let's be honest, their first real like test this season because you've seen what happened with. Notre Dame after week one, but at the end of the day, um, if if everybody if Ohio State takes care of business, it's not really going to matter you know, where they rank because if they go fifteen and zero, they'll win the national championship. So I think that yeah, it's like it's cool and it's 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 fun to talk about these rankings, but at the end of the day, like everything will be decided on the field. So. It just creates some extra buzz during the week, especially as we go through the midway point of this season. Also, Illinois coming in at 16. How about Brett Bielema, baby? Yeah, Brett Bielema. I, I honestly thought that Illinois might have been a little bit higher. Say what you will about the offense. Chase Brown, though, has been great as a running back, and the defense is fantastic. But let's recap last weekend in Happy Valley, and it was a close one through the first three quarters of the game, trailing 21-16 to with nine minutes left against Penn State. Ohio State went on. They got two rushing touchdowns from Travion Henderson. They got a 24-yard touchdown catch from Cade Stouffer. And then the pick six from JT Tuimolo to cap off his historic day. The defensive end for Ohio State, he was everything and then some. How important is it to have a guy like JT Tuimolo out to have a performance like that, Kobe? Well, it's huge. Obviously, was one of the top players in his recruiting class in 2021. I remember when he committed to Ohio State on July 4th. It was a big get for them. And, you know, coming in as a freshman, he, he didn't in, uh, enroll early. So he wasn't starting at the same class, sta- same start, excuse me, as the guys who came in, you know, January, February. But, you know, he, he showed some flashes last year why he was so highly touted. And this year we, we're really seeing, like, how special he can be. And then uh, – Saturday's performance against Penn State. I mean, that's that was one of the greatest defensive performances I've ever seen uh, from a from a player at Ohio State. It reminded me of when Chase Young was here, you know, in 2019, when he would just take over games single handedly. And I almost kind of prompted the question, Joey, might that be one of the greatest defensive performances ever in college football history? I I mean, Tyler, as good as it was, I think it was. I mean, six tackles, two sacks, two interceptions, one forced fumble, fumble recovery. And one touchdown. I mean, that's just alarming numbers from uh, JT. But, you know, I thought, you know, besides him, Ohio State's defense really couldn't kind of put a string together a couple stops. You know, they had um, some issues there. But uh, towards the end of the game, you know, when it needed it the most, JT Tumalau was everywhere. And um, it was just great to see kind of a breakout game for him and um, at Penn State. It was great to see. 44-31 44 to 31 was the Ohio State win, but Northwestern, they go to 1 in 7 after a loss against Iowa Jack. They lose 33 to 13, and their rough first eight game stretch continues for Pat Fitzgerald and his Wildcats. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Pat 
Fitzgerald has been to a couple Big Ten championships. He's uh, he's done a lot for a program that's not, uh, even though it's in the Big Ten, which is probably the second best conference college football, um, doesn't have much name value. And he's done a lot with that little program. But it's just been a tough year for them, Ty. And that's not finding enough consistency on offense. And then I just think the big thing is what's made them uh, good in the past. You know, the couple times Ohio State's seen them. Strong front seven, strong O-line. Just not the same as years past, even though they have that left tackle. who's so going to be a first-round pick, but... Besides that, and just they're struggling up front. He's got the highest pass block grade in all of college football right now, according to PFF. That's Peter Skaronsky, the left tackle, just an unbelievable pass blocker and run blocker as well. So with that, Jack, when you look at Northwestern, they're coming into this game. They have a big home game against Ohio State. Something to prove, definitely. But what catches your eye from this Wildcats team outside of just the front seven on both sides of the ball? Well, I think even though I'm going right back there, I just uh, uh, even though um, it's not up to Northwestern's usual standards under Coach Fitzgerald, it's still a tough front seven, and Ohio State hasn't been themselves running the ball. Uh, this is a good place to really work on that and get back to the basics and just kind of find themselves as a unit there. Um, there's been some big plays, but there, it, it's not what they, the line play, at least from the O line perspective, is not of the caliber to win a national championship right now. And this is a good game to get themselves back on the track for that. Kobe, the Wildcats are looking for their first win against Ohio State since 2004. Who's a player that might help them try and achieve that goal? Just looking at the defense right now, I remember A.J. Hampton, one of their nickelbacks. They play sort of a similar uh, defensive uh, scheme, kind of a 4-2-5, similar to what Jim Knowles runs. We'll have to see how it plays out on the field on Saturday, but... He's a guy that's been there. He's a veteran. He knows I mean, he was there when last time these two teams met in the 2020 a Big Ten title. So I'm looking out for him. He's he's one of the best players for sure. Yeah, I mean, going along off that, I think a bright spot for this team is Evan Hall, the running back. I mean, 136 attempts on 579 yards. It's about four, car- four yards per carry on uh, three touchdowns. So I think um, you know, he's a bright spot for this offense. Um, you know, I've had some issues at quarterback, you know, starting with, Ryan Holinsky, uh, shout out Holinsky's Hope, by the way, student support mental health. Very, so, very important. Shout out that. Shout out. Um, but, you know, they've had Ryan Holinsky and now Brandon Sullivan coming in, um, you know, trying to, you know, get this offense, you know, to be a you know better offense in the Big Ten. I think Evan Hall is one of the guys that helps him do that. And Sullivan converted 23 of his 30 passes last week against Iowa. So it looks like things are trending towards him being the starting quarterback this afternoon. Now looking at Ohio State, now their offense, we know everything about their offense. The defense continues to climb, forcing turnovers left and right after not doing so in the first two weeks. That's been the total opposite over the last six games. But the running game, Joey, was something that you stressed a little bit. How important is the running game going to be after a couple back-to-back weeks where the performance wasn't up to what it had been for the first couple of games? Well, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, our, our running game hasn't been to you know the par it was, and especially last week, I think it was a good example of that until late where Travion broke out for that touchdown. But other than that, um, it's been, we've kind of relied on our passing game um, and I think this week, you know, you know, like you mentioned, Jack, you know, Northwestern kind of likes to play that, you know, ground and pound football. Um, and we're going to need to, um, you know, kind of adapt to that. So I think Travion Henderson and I don't know if Mayan Williams is back this week yet, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to improve on that. I think Travion Henderson can help us. Do that. Ryan Day said that him and Ohio State, they were hoping to get him back this week. Of course, talking about Mayan Williams, who was sidelined for a lot of that game in the first half. Also, Marvin Harrison Jr. coming off a career-high game. And and that's saying something, Kobe, after the career year he has put up. But the fact that he had 10 receptions, 185 yards, he had the score to boot as well. What does Marvin Harrison Jr. do to the offense? I mean, he's... What are they? I mean, obviously they said it last year with uh, C.J. Stroud and Jackson Fifth and Jigba, seven eleven always open. But maybe there needs to be a seven eighteen store that's always open too, because this guy's always open. His his breaks off the route they're incredible. He's six four. He has a huge catch radius. He catches everything. And his his athleticism and his hand eye coordination when he's in the air, he's able to make contested catches. I mean, he, he's one of the best receivers that's come through this program, and that's saying something when you look at the guys. At, who have played for Ohio State and you know Marvin Harrison Jr. you know 
if he continues on this pace, God willing, he's got good health. Knock on wood. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna have a better career than his dad did. Also, seven plus eleven equals eighteen as That's well. That's also true. That's good math. <laughs> so let's go around the table here before we get into our score predictions here on the Block O Show, presented by Barrio Tacos. What is one key that you guys have for this game for Ohio State to try and get this win? Well, we've already talked about the running game. I did want to. I want to talk about the defense, and I think this is also a big game for uh, the DBs. You know, it, this is a t- offense here, kind of, kind of. I mean, not as bad as Iowa, but kind of in that realm of of who you're playing, right? And so you, you don't want to give up any big. You don't want to like take any steps back, you know. And so you obviously you don't. Um, you know, turnovers kind of come and go. You know, it's all about playing smart, forcing what you can. But you know, you can leave a game with three could have been picks, right? Ohio State just kind of, kind of <clears throat> make sure they don't take any steps back. Um, focus on that turnover game still, because this is the type of team where they can force fumbles and get picks on, and still play uh, or still still keep making those strides on defense. I know thirty one points is a lot, but I thought the defense was really good last week. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I I think for for Ohio State um, to just come in and, and and play their brand of football, I think it starts like you mentioned, Jack, with the defense the defense and getting it done uh, first on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and, and stopping those big plays from Northwestern and, and letting them establish a run game. Uh, I think Ohio State's got to take take that away quickly. Um, and I think they'll let the offense kind of do its thing. I mean, there, there really hasn't been many mistakes with the offense this year other than, you know, a couple interceptions here or there. But I, I think it starts with the defense just getting it done on that side of the ball. Running the football is the most important thing in the entire sport. I know I'm going to sound like – I'm old and you want to tell me, to, I'm going to tell you to get off my lawn. But look, Ohio State would have been 12-0 and last year if they could stop the run because they got run over by Oregon and they got run over by Michigan. There's not a con- – the concern is not, yes, they can throw the ball with anybody in college football, probably better than anybody. But at the end of the day, if you do not win the line of scrimmage, you're not going to be able to beat the elite teams in college football – Obviously, Northwestern hasn't won in North America yet this season, so they're not one of the elite teams. But, like, this is Ohio State, and the expectation is to win a national championship. And to do that, you're going to have to be the elite team. So I just want to see an improvement uh, from last week. You know, they didn't really run the ball well, only 3.6 yards per carry last week. So you need to get that average to, like, 5 to 6, especially in college. College and the NFL is different where, you know, if you're running back, you're averaging 4.5 yards per carry in the NFL. It's pretty darn good. But college, it's a little different. So... Just, if they're able to establish the run, take a little bit of pressure off of CJ, and also it'll make CJ Stroud's job way easier because if Northwestern got can't stop the run and they need to commit to the run, put eight guys in the box, I mean, that's leaving single coverage for Julian Fleming, Emeka Buka, and Marvin Harrison Jr., and there's not a DB in the country that can cover those guys one-on-one. And you look at Ibuka and Harrison, those two have combined for over 1,400 receiving yards already through eight games. And that overseas win you're talking about for Northwestern, their week zero victory over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They still haven't won inside the continental U.S. I'd say another key as well going off of that is getting in, getting into the backfield as well because Joey mentioned Evan Hall, an all-purpose weapon for Northwestern. He's got over 400 receiving yards and rushing yards each, so look for getting pressure in the backfield, getting those edge, edge rushers involved. That can definitely be a key for sure. So now looking ahead at this game, Northwestern and number two, Ohio State. First meeting between the two programs since the 2020 Big Ten Championship, a game in which Ohio State won, especially due to the historic rushing performance of Trey Sermon in his first and only year as an Ohio State Buckeye. Jack, let's start off with you. What is your score prediction for this one? I I think the Buckeyes get back to over 50 points this week. They've scored 40 points in every game besides Notre Dame, so I'm taking Buckeyes 52, Northwestern 7. You like that, Kobe? Well, okay, let's 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 think about it. So the last time these two the last two times these teams have played at Ryan Field, they've both been night games. Twenty thirteen was a Saturday night game and one of the worst bad beats of all time. You can look it up. Twenty nineteen Ohio State won fifty two to three and it wasn't close. This game is eleven AM local time. Ohio State hasn't played a game that early in especially this year. I don't know I, I'll have to check about last year, but that's got to be something 
you got to think about because they're starting an hour before they usually would. Everything is pushed up an hour. But at the end of the day, Ohio State's one of the best teams in the country, and I think they're going to win this game pretty easily. But Pat Fitzgerald runs a great program at Ohio State, one of my favorite coaches to you know follow in college football. I'd say Ohio State, 47, Northwestern, 10. Yeah, I, I think I, I think this game at the start of the first quarter, I think this is a close game in the first quarter. I think it's inspired football from Northwestern. They come out with an energy, um, but I think things calm down. I think Ohio State just finds their rhythm, and, and I, I think they pull away from this one, specifically in the second half. And like uh, uh, Jack mentioned, I think they get over 50. I think it's like you know, 56, 13 is my final. Good picks all around. I'll say Ohio State 45 to 13. So that will do it here on the Barrio Tacos Block O Show. But first, guys, before we head over to Evanston, we got to fuel up on some Barrio Tacos. That's for sure. It's now open right on the heart of the Ohio State campus at 15th and High Streets. Barrio is serving tacos and margaritas late night each night and has an incredible happy hour with half-off margs and dollar-off tacos weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Don't forget, Barrio accepts Buck ID and is offering to go and DoorDash. You can also catch Barrio inside the shoe, not this week because Ohio State's away, but during home games at Section 10A and at their taco truck Mondays to Fridays, parked right outside the RPAC. That'll do it for the Block O Show presented by Barrio Tacos. You can listen to Scarlet and Gray Sports Radio's coverage of number two Ohio State and Northwestern starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central. And then Jack Murphy and I will have the pregame. Kobe and Joey will have the call on SGSR. And that will do it for the Block O Show presented by Barrio Tacos. So for our producer, Caleb Spinner, for Kobe Mayer, Joey Fear, Jack Murphy, I'm Tyler Danberg signing off.